stew and dumplings in a Yorkshire pudding. Hi guys, how are you all doing? Welcome to Backyard Chef. I'm Rick. Today we're going to make beef stew, slow cooked beef stew, dumplings. Now we're going to make it the British way with suet and we're going to serve it in a giant Yorkshire pudding. I've already cubed up the meat guys. Onions, carrots, celery and potatoes. Let's show you how to do this and we need to sear and season our beef. So let's season our meat, sear it off, dump it in the slow cooker with the rest of our ingredients, a bit of tomato paste, thyme, whatever, and we'll leave it to cook for eight hours. Okay, so let's sear the meat and let's get started. Let's show you how to do this. Okay guys, I've got a kilo of beef here and I've cubed it up. So we're gonna go in with a good pinch of salt Now don't forget this is the only time that we can season this meat. So we've got a good pinch of salt there and then we want to go in with some freshly ground black pepper. Again a decent amount of freshly ground black pepper. Give it a quick mix over so we get that on all our cubes of meat. So that's it guys all we need to do now is put some oil in a pan and start searing. Okay, get the pan on, and we want to go in with a little bit of oil. So get some oil in there. Now we're going to cook all this meat, so you know you can put a, a good glug of oil in. And then we want to go in with about half this meat. Okay, so get about half the meat in there. Now if you wanted to add garlic or anything like that, you can do so. That's up to you guys. So nice and steady then. Now what I'm going to do guys, I'm going to cook this in two batches and then I'm going to put it all together and put some flour in. Okay, so get that out of there into a bowl. And then what we need to do guys, we need to go in with the rest. So get the rest in there. Okay guys, and then what we're going to do is return that back to our pan. Give it a bit of a cooking in there so it's all together. We want to go in with about three tablespoons of flour. And a pinch of black pepper. So let's just give this a bit of a cooking in here now. Cook out the rawness of this flour in our meat juices and our oil and you can see it's absorbed it all. So all we'll do now is put that little bit of a sear over all of this. Okay, now what you could do, we don't need to deglaze the pan because the way we've done it, we haven't burnt anything on there. What you could do guys to deglaze the pan if you do not have any red wine one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar and a little drop of pomegranate juice. Now that smells amazing. And as you can see from our sunlit piece of beef there, it's got a little bit of a brown crusty edge. Right, that's our meat cooked guys. We need to set up our slow cooker right in with a pinch of time guys Put a pinch of thyme in there. In with a good glug of Worcestershire sauce, okay? We want about at least a tablespoon in there. Or maybe it's a little bit more. So a nice good glug of Worcester sauce. Two good heaped tablespoons of tomato paste. Get that in there. Then we want to go in with our beef broth. So 
We've got two and a half cups of beef broth here. Just give it a little stir through. Make sure everything's stirred, stirred in there. Now, like I say, I want to cook dumplings in here, so to cook dumplings, we need some fluid. So that's it. That's as easy as that. And then we'll add a couple of bay leaves. There we are. Put the lid on. And just set it off on low. Now we're gonna cook on low for about eight hours. Okay, what we've got to do guys, we've got to make up some dumplings. Very easy, we're gonna make suet dumplings the British way to put on our stew. So let's show you how to do this. Right. Okay guys, in here, 250 grams soft raisin flour. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to add about a level tablespoon of baking powder. And that's going to give it that bit of an oomph to bring it out of there, make light dumplings. Now, I was it dumplings are not going to be crispy because they're going to be in the slow cooker. So we want to add a pinch of salt. Now, we want to go in with our suet. So get our suet in there. And we've got about 50 grams of butter. I think 60 grams actually of butter. So get that in there. And then we're just with a normal knife, just cut it in a little bit. Just cut it in. Cut it in with a flour, mix it in. And then what we're going to do, we're going to get our hands in there. Okay. So we get our hands in and we want to turn this into breadcrumbs. Now, we don't want to overwork this with our hands, okay? Light hands, light dumplings. <laughs> that's a theory. But you know, that's not quite true because the dumplings depend on how much fluid you put in to how light they are. If you have too much fluid, You've got big, heavy, stodgy dumplings. Fantastic. Right guys, now what we're going to do, we're going to make these a herby dumpling. Uh, we're going to put parsley in here. Okay, now you can actually mix it all together with the water or you can finely chop the parsley now and put it in and then add the water in there and mix it all up into dumplings. And that's the way we're going to do it. So we'll just put this to one side. Now I'm not going to wash my hands because we're going to get straight back in. So nice and steady then all the way through and give it a really good we want about give it a really good chopping you know we want about two tablespoons of parsley. Now it's always better to use fresh herbs in dumplings rather than dried herbs. The only reason being is that the dumplings only take 20-25 minutes to cook the longest and the dry herbs sometimes do not get cooked through and you still have this hard bits of herb in there. So that is our fresh parsley chopped and all we're going to do is add that straight into our mix. Give it a little mix through, toss it up and down so it's all in there, all incorporated. That is fantastic. Okay, and then all we're going to do is add about 100 milliliters of water to start off with. Take your knife and start to bring it all together. Now, like I say, we want a fairly soft dough. We don't want a hard dough, and we don't want a soggy dough. It's a compromised dough, this, guys, because if it's too soggy, your dumplings are going to be too heavy. 
and if it's too hard well your dumplings are going to be hard and they will not have that nice soft fluffy texture so get our hands in there and let's bring this together and feel the dough with our hands now we want a light dough slightly sticky now I think that's too dry guys okay so we're going to add just a little bit more water give that a mix through now like I say we want a sticky dough but not so gloopy and sticky that it sticks to us all over now I think that is about perfect it's got that slight stickiness not too sticky it's got a slight stickiness and that is our dumpling mix mixed so as you can see it's slightly sticky but not too sticky okay so that's our dumpling mix now if you live in a cold country you can make this in the morning cover it over and leave it on the side it won't matter it's 29 degrees outside here today so I can't leave this on the side because of the butter content and everything in here it will start to melt so I'm just going to put this in a really cool place the fridge so like I say guys I'm going to put mine in a bag and I'm just going to put it in the fridge to stay cool whoa right guys oh just look at that now that's what we're talking so let's take that bay leaf out we don't need that and then we take that bay leaf out too we don't need that oh hot just look at that stew that is amazing so all we got to do now guys is put our dumplings in so we take our dumpling pastry out of our bag and then what we need to do we need to break this up into even sized pieces really so we want the dumplings to cook evenly so let's just roll it out a little bit like that in our hands and then we'll take one now I'm not going to squash these very hard actually we're just going to squash them lightly so we got three more the same we got a small one but not to worry so let's just split that open So take it apart but we do not want to be squashing it into a tight ball just leave it quite loose okay now they're going to be quite big actually but all we need to do now so we've got one two three four five six seven eight nine we've got ten dumplings okay and all we're going to do is put them back in our slow cooker and cook them for about 20 minutes so let's put our dumplings in there one two three nine ten ten dumplings put the lid back on and we'll cook this for about 20 25 minutes okay let's get the lid off here guys oh ho, ho. just look at those dumplings absolutely superb right it's getting a little bit dark outside guys so it's time to serve up our stew and dumplings okay guys what we need to do is serve some of our meat and veg up into our yorkshire pudding 
Oh, just look at that. Oh, man. Oh, and that is a really nice tender beef. You can see it falling apart. Oh, and we want a little bit of that gravy in there. Get a little bit of that gravy in our pudding. Oh, my word. Just look at that. Oh. Oh. Oh, man. Stew and dumplings in a Yorkshire pudding. Oh, there we are, guys. Just look at that. Bit of brown sauce. Oh, you can't go wrong with a bit of brown sauce. And guys, I've had a request to make brown sauce, so that will be coming. Oh, light, light, airy dumplings. Oh, oh, look at that beef, guys. Just look at that beef. Oh, it's falling apart. I think we're going to tackle this with a spoon. Oh. Oh man. Oh man. Oh man. Oh, we got a spoon and a fork. Oh, let's do it the Thai way. Oh, tender beef, vegetables. Really, really light and fluffy dumplings. Oh, they're amazing. Mm. Guys, if you like what we're doing, oh, it's not going to stay on there. I'm going to have to eat it. Mm -hmm. Guys, if you like what we're doing and you would like to subscribe, that would be absolutely fantastic. Till next time, keep safe. Oh man. Oh, 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 oh.